Okay, we'll get started. So hi, everybody. Welcome to Jenkins Online Meetup. Thanks for joining us. In today's session, GSOC lead mentors will be doing an overview of five project ideas. And I will share those five project ideas in a little bit. Um, if you're not speaking, could you please go on mute? Because I'm hearing some background. Okay. Shikrant, can you please go on mute? Yes, okay. Thank you. So my name is Alyssa Tong. I'm one of the admin uh, for GSOC this year. On this webinar with me are other GSOC mentor, um, admins. Uh, Jean-Marc Mason, Chris Stern. Um, Chris is also a mentor. And then uh, also Mark Waite is another lead mentor for our um, project. So mm -hmm. some housekeeping items. Um, before we begin, this session is being recorded. We will share the link to the recording after today's session. We also have an active GSOC Gitter and Discourse channels for further communication. So feel free to join the conversations there or post questions there after this webinar. And lastly, the code of conduct. Um, this is in full effect here as well as throughout our community. So um, please be respectful and be kind to one another. So in case you missed last month's webinar, we did a session on setting the expectations for potential candidates and tips on how to be successful in this program. Um, if you missed that webinar, please use the uh, link that I have there in, uh, re under recording and um, see, you know, are you gonna be up for this? And um, we wanna make sure that you're successful in this program. So um, have a look and, you know, Make sure if it's right for you. And then, um, so in this webinar, our lead mentors who are Mark Waite and Chris Stern, they will walk over these five project ideas. Um, the first three project ideas will be covered by Mark and the last two will be covered by Chris Stern. Um, so Mark, uh, I'll let you take it from here without further delay. But uh, for the remaining project ideas on the list, we will cover it at another day, um, but which we will schedule soon. So more to come about that. Thanks, Alyssa. So one one thing for my benefit is that you as participants in this ses session can be a big help if when you have a question, you'll raise your hand. Now, the way you do that is down at the bottom of, of at least the screen I have, there's a reactions button. When you click that reactions button, there's a raise hand. And that helps the rest of us know, oh, you you are interested in a conversation about this. Then we'll call on you. We've got a lot of people in this session. And if we don't, if we don't use a, a uh, some way of, of arbitrating, it gets really complicated. So please use the, the reactions button, raise your hand and then ask a question. But we do want you to ask questions. It's crucial that if you have a question, don't be shy because if you have a question, several other people probably have exactly the same question and wish that they were brave enough to ask it. So Mark, are you able to share uh, from, okay, here we go. There we go. You should be able to share now. Great. Okay. So here we here. Let's sharing now. And everybody should tell me if you see my screen, you should see a wintry we... background of something or other. Yes. We okay. See your good. screen. Great. So let me bring up. All right. And I see thumbs up. Very good. All right. So now let's bring up my, my page. All right. So Let's start first with the where do you go to find this information. The first step is you look here on Jenkins under subprojects, Google Summer of Code. All right. And on this page is GSOC 2024. And here is a hyperlink that shows you where the project ideas can be found. So I just jumped to those. And I want to talk first about 
And I'm talking about these in what I'd call my priority order. So, so as a lead mentor, there are things that are, are more important to me and things that are less important. So let's talk about them in my priority order. They may not be things that are as interesting to you, but this is what my priority order is. So the first piece for discussion is the backend in, in extension indexer tool. Jenkins is a large and long-lived project. And it's important to our users that they be able to find information about it and that they, they get detailed and deep information. One of the things that we document for them is for the developers, we have an index of the extension points that are available from Jenkins plugins and Jenkins core. And this extension points extensions point index helps them identify where they can add their capabilities. Oh, I could just use this to do that. I could use this. However, we have a problem. The tool that generates this thing is broken. If you look at this, it shows maybe if I were to give a rough count, that might be a hundred items in that list, maybe 50. Whereas there are probably four or 500 plugins that provide extensions. So this list is much too short and it's too short because of this problem. It needs to be re-implemented. All right, so what, what the story is, is that if a plugin has been modernized, I know this is gonna sound terrible, but if a plugin has been modernized, it disappears from the list. And that's really a bad thing, right? We, we don't want modernization to cause you to disappear. So what we've got is the existing implementation looks like this in this repository. And this implementation needs to be revisited to consider how can we, how can we replace this implementation with something that works better to extract the backend extensions. Now, what's cool about this project is the way it does its work it downloads all the Jenkins plugins and iterates over all the Jenkins plugins and should look inside their binaries for specific, specific Java objects, specific Java annotations. And that then flags, oh, this is an extension that should be indexed. And that exercise, learning how to traverse large code bases and how to rapidly inspect binary data inside Java, Java files, Java binary files, for me is a cool project. And that's what I think makes this one interesting. It's also a, a thing that's been broken for a while and we very much want it back. Now to the group, do you have questions based on my description of the backend extension indexer tool? And it's okay to raise your hand. At this point, you could even just unmute and ask your question. It seems relatively quiet. We're okay with that. Jana, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, my query is, uh, you said uh, that backend extension lecture tool needs to re-implement it. It means uh, we need to be implemented in other way or just need to stick uh, in the existing code. I think it would probably be a re-implementation. So it, it will likely be a new implementation just mm -hmm. because we've got a tool right now that already exists called the usage in plugin, usage in plugins tool that knows how to download all the plugins and iterate over them. And it does a search inside those plugins for, for things. And so that tool, the usage in plugins tool, is probably the starting point for this recreation of this thing. It could be done by reworking the existing code. It, it That might also work, but my hunch is that it would be better to consider a full replacement and the replacement has to meet the, the needs that were are already provided by the existing implementation. So this list of extensions should still be there plus many more. Jana, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah I got it. Yeah. So we have it, a question from... Oh, Carlos, um, Carlos, go ahead, please. 
Yeah, Mark, well, my question is, uh, where is uh, specified which kind of annotations we need to search or basically this part of the implementation that you mentioned before, uh, where are the, the annotations? Good question. And that's in the source code of the current okay. implementation. Right. Right. So that's a, that's a very good question. It's like, okay, where is it that this thing is defined? And the answer is it's down here in the source code. Oh, so okay. if we look here, we'll see, hey, okay. here is the here is the extension points extractor. And and so it's right there in that implementation. Good, good question. Excellent question, Carlos, because right now what there what doesn't exist is a formal specification or even a working prototype mm -hmm. of something that says, yeah. oh, this is how we would do that. That's yeah, exactly. going to be part of the work to create will this. Be, that will be necessary to specify that like a formally. So will be easier later. Right. I, I think that, that I think that that's part of the development of the project Got plan. It. Is hey, this is what should be extracted, and this is how it should be should be written. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, Thanks. now I have to I have to re potentially refine this. I may be wrong on estimate of project size. I've been wrong almost every time I've estimated project size in my life. So don't be shocked if in defining this you realize. If someone who's working on this says, oh, Mark's wrong, it's not a small size. This is medium or potentially even large. That's okay, right? Me me being wrong in estimating project size is a long-standing pattern. Yeah, like uh, every software engineer, I think. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm not alone, right? It's a relief. I'm not alone in being yeah, bad yeah. at estimating. Yeah, okay, so thank you. It, in, if you come on these kind of uh, findings, uh, don't hesitate, and I recommend that you put that in your proposal and also document it and say, for this and that reason, right. this is how I break down uh, the work for that project. Right, and also and the reality is, is the project plan is the best way to improve this estimate, right? A, a real project plan is much better than Mark make, wait, making a wild guess. Wild guesses just aren't nearly as good as real project plans. Good. Any other questions? Thanks, thanks, Carlos. An excellent question. Very, very no good. Problem. I don't see any other questions. Okay, so so let's let's look just just to remind people just how broad this is. Here's what plugins.jenkins.io looks like, okay, I'm going to show one little thing here, which is 39 pages of plugins for Jenkins that need to be visited by this tool. And these pages, I think it's roughly 50 per page. So, so there is there are a lot of plugins that this tool will be traversing, walking through as it assesses, is there an extension in this plugin that needs to be indexed? All right. So, oh, Carlos, question? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, this uh, information and in, in these binaries are already stored in some kind of database or file system or which kind of... Uh, Very good question. Files. Yes, they are. They're, so we have, we have an artifact repository. That's the authoritative artifact repository for the Jenkins project. And that authoritative artifact repository is repo.jenkinsci.org. And in the in the tool, I think in the source code for backend extension indexer, you'll probably see it. And you'd also likely see it in the usage in plugins tool, where it asks a question of probably the update center and then uses the artifact repository to download the files that it needs. Okay, so it's a file system based repository. Okay. It yeah. it yeah, it well, I don't know how JFrog stores it at the back end because yeah, yeah. for me it's a okay. magic it's a magic box into which i push artifacts and they bring them back to me anytime i ask yeah that is important uh jfrog you use for the artifact okay right okay. yeah it's it's a donated donate donated jfrog artifactory and we're very grateful to jfrog for hosting it they've okay. they've hosted it for what 10 or 15 years for us and they're just very kind to us okay thank you any other questions on backend extension indexer? We're not done yet. This is this is just step one. Okay, so let's let's shift our focus then to the next one, which is bearer token authentication. 
And this one is, again, an opportunity for Mark Waite to hang his head in embarrassment and say that when I proposed this project idea, I had what I thought was a simple concept for how to do it. And thanks to the explorations of several GSOC potential contributors, I've learned much more. And that, that increased learning has said, oh, wow, this is both more complicated than I expected and, in fact, may be almost infeasible in the in the way I had envisioned it. So let's let's talk a little bit about what this means. So bare token authentication is a form of, of authentication that uses HTTP protocol to share a, a an authentication token between the Git client and the Git server, for instance, Bitbucket. And a special header is used to transmit that bearer token with a, a special format. That special header is sent in the Git command. However, that special header, then if we read the internet RFCs, advise that, oh, we should only send it once, and Git's already sending it. And there are all sorts of surprises and complications hiding in this thing. So right now, the bigger challenge with bearer token authentication is to understand, is it feasible to solve the problem that is being, being pro proposed here? Because the request from the users who asked for this was, please give us bearer token authentication so that we can talk to our GitHub server using a, a simpler credential. And the answer right now that needs to be explored is, is that feasible? Is that, and what is the right way to do it to fit with things like command line git, jgit, git large file storage, so git LFS, each of them has some interesting complications hiding under this, under this particular topic. This one I assume is going to generate some questions. So, so what questions do you have about it? And I'm okay if there aren't questions too, that's great. I see a hand raised, raised by Carlos. Ah, oh, Carlos, go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, one question uh, related to the beer token. Uh, what is the, or how is the, how, how you are getting that token? Who is the authority or who is the, yeah, I don't know which kind of implementation you use for that uh, to get uh, this beer token? Good question. So the the Git plugin, or in this case, the Git client plugin, has a very simple way of thinking about credentials. It asks the Jenkins Credentials Storage System, the Jenkins Credentials Manager, to give it a credential by ID. And then it uses that credential. And it's up to the user to create those credentials with the correct values in the Jenkins Credential Manager. So it's my assumption anyway, was that this bearer token is just requested from the Jenkins credentials manager by identifier and then pushed as part of the Git request from Git client towards the Git server, whether Bitbucket or GitHub. Got it. Okay. Got it. So, so now in terms of that doesn't put any constraints on the lifetime of that token, right? It doesn't put any, that we rely on the, the provider of the token to decide what its lifetime should be. And it doesn't put any constraints on how it arrived in the Jenkins Credential Manager. It could be that it's somehow generated and published automatically to the, to the Jenkins Credentials Manager. The Git client plugin just cares I ask for a token by identifier and I get a value back and I ship it. So the issuer is this uh, Jenkins credential manager, the issuer of the token. Either that or the issuer is the upstream repository and then it comes mm -hmm. into Jenkins through some other means, right? Okay. Yes, so so the, the issuer from the Git client plugins perspective is in fact the Jenkins credentials manager. Got it, okay. Other questions? All right. Oh, oh okay, Wamo, go ahead. Um, thanks. Uh, my question is similar to Carlos. I was just wondering, like, um, 
I guess the implementation for the Ambera token identification is already active. So what exactly are we doing different? You made, made mention about making it simpler. What does simpler mean? Ah, good, good question. Okay, so that that's worth some some background on the Git Git client plugin of authentication alternatives. So the Git client plugin speaks two protocols. It either will speak to the remote server using SSH protocol, or it will speak to the remote server using HTTP protocol. When it speaks to the remote server using SSH protocol, it must use a private key. All right, so that's a private key type credential, something you and I would use when we run invoke an SSH command. Those are private keys. So an SSH private key is used for SSH uh, protocol-based communication. When the Git client plugin today communicates through HTTPS with a, an upstream server like GitHub or, or Bitbucket, it uses username slash password credentials. So the username slash password credential is a different credential type in Jenkins than the SSH private key credential type. What this, the idea here was we would add support to the Git client plugin for one more credential type instead of just SSH private key and just username password, we would add secret text type where secret text is just a single string. And that single string would be what would be passed as the bearer token. So, so the idea there was instead of two credential system, two credentials being allowed, SSH for the SSH protocol and username password for HTTP, we would allow three where SSH is required for the SSH protocol, but either username password or secret text would be used for HTTP. And it would be up to the user to decide which credential they chose, and that would then let us choose that type. So, Okawamo, did that answer your question? Yes, yes, it's very clear. I think it's clear now. Okay, Thank you. good. Yeah, and there's actually a pull request pending that proposes to add the, the support for secret text. However, the technique being used, I guess this is another one where it's worth, maybe it's worth highlighting this to everyone here. There is a pull request that proposes, hey, here's how we could add support for secret text and do this bearer, bearer token authentication. The problem is that proposed pull request assumes a version of Git which is newer than the versions that we support. So this is one of those, oh, flinch because um, some of my colleagues in the platform SIG know what Mark Waite feels about certain old operating systems. Uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 is not my friend, for example, uh, but Debian 10 and Ubuntu 20 both ship a version of command line Git that won't work with this pull request that's been submitted. And I would expect whoever proposes this project must propose a solution that will work with these older versions of Git. We, we, we simply cannot abandon our older our, our users on old operating systems. If the operating system is supported by Jenkins, we owe it to them to keep supporting it. So it that, that is a technical difficulty hiding in this project that you don't just have to think about the version of command line Git that is running on your Windows machine that you just barely installed. You also have to think very carefully about the command line Git that is installed on Mark Waite's Debian 10 box that he installed originally three or four years ago and is still using and keeping updated. So, so that's, a, that's a be safe and be, be aware. Any other questions on bearer token authentication? Okay, you've been very patient. Let's talk There's about plugins. another in. question. Oh, Mark. go ahead. Oh, Okemamo. Okay, 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 no, I was giving it a thumbs up. Yeah. Oh, oh, great. Thank you. Okay. Super. Thanks very much. All right. We're 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 we I've used more time than I probably should have. So let's get to the next one, the plugin installation manager tool. Okay, so the plugin installation manager tool is used by people like me who construct Jenkins controllers with configuration as code. And we define the list of plugins that we want to install. 
And then the plugin installation manager tool downloads those plugins and makes them ready so that I can create my new Jenkins controller based on it. We use it in the Jenkins container images with Docker. There are users who use it outside of that, for instance, with a standard installation. It works really well. Uh, however, it doesn't always meet every need. And the challenge then is that there are some things that need to improve here. And those things that need to improve are you're invited to explore them, to understand them. One of them, for instance, was discovered or discussed in depth at the Jenkins Contributor Summit in Brussels, Belgium, February 2nd, 2024, where we need a concept of a lock file in the plugin installation manager tool with that lock file being a precise list of exactly the plugins we need as opposed to the high level definition of which subset of plugins are most important to me that is used to generate the lock file. That's one. The other thing that we need from this particular project is Bruno and I right now are suffering because of a bug in this project. And that suffering is causing us to wish somebody would please fix that bug. You can find that bug in the list of, of issues. And it, it is that we're not resolving tran trans transitive dependencies correctly. So, so there's a, an interesting problem in graph theory hiding there. And this one needs your help. Any questions about the plugin installation manager tool improvements? Okay, then Alyssa, I think we're ready to go on to Chris. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen for now, unless there are, there are questions. Okay, I, I am sharing my screen right now. Um... Hey, Chris. I'm here. Hang on. Not there yet. Not there yet, yeah. Mm, that's kind of weird. It seems like I'll stuck there. You want Let's... me to go back? So right, yeah. right. Yeah. Unsharing and resharing again. Mm, hold on. How about that now? Is this the right slide now? It's still locked it's on. Yeah. It shows Alyssa is starting a screen share. Double click to full screen mode. While we're sorting that out, okay. I see that there is a question there from Jana or Jana. Can you go ahead? Yeah, I have a question like uh, for a single project idea, how many people can contribute? Sorry, could I... you ask that again for a single project idea and then I lost the last of the sentence? Yeah, for for a single project idea, how many people can contribute? Like one oh. single or multiple people? Do you explain that, Mark, or do you want... Actually, I'll leave it to you, John Mark, or to Chris, so... so... John Mark. Yeah, okay. So, um, several people can compete on one proposal or, or uh, on one project idea. Uh, only one person will be selected for a given project idea or project. Uh, and uh, this uh, person will then be sponsored uh, by Google during the summer uh, to do the work. So uh, many people can compete, only one person will be selected. And once selected, there will be only one person uh, working on that project during GSOC. Does that okay. answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't want we can we can take these kind of questions at the end of the presentation we want to um, focus you... right now okay. go ahead from akash in the chat so um oh so mark I want you to take a look at it and answer it because like, it's it's related to the project it's not a general question so we have to plug in uh, this do you see yeah. it mark it's i i do see it okay so let's let me see if i can give an answer so how many features or enhancements can you propose as many as you feel will fit inside the time of the project. 
uh, remembering that uh, project plans are are a, a best guess and propose several. I, I would not see any any shame in proposing a set. Uh, in this case, the most crucial ones, the bug fix that I want to see is a good way to show, hey, I know how to work on this code. So you could even fix that prior to the prior to the the release prior to the decision on which projects are being selected. The, There's an the, additional question. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. What's the additional question? The yes, question. additional question. How, yeah, follow-up question. Uh -huh. uh, how will they be prioritized? And I can answer that one is you propose. So the candidates says, in my opinion, this is the order in which I would like to tackle uh, the different features. So you build a project plan. You can discuss it. People will review it. So the the mentors uh, will say, well, my opinion for that and that reason, I would change the order. But you come with a proposal. Don't forget one of the ideas behind Google Summer of Code is that you, you're not going to do what you're told to do. You are in the lead. You are proposing things, and we're just there to help you achieve that. So it's it's a different relationship than at school, where you have to do what a teacher tells you to do. Here. Does that answer the question, uh, Akash? Waiting on the. Eventually, you can come back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, being mindful of the time, uh, I propose or suggest that we move to Chris' mm -hmm. presentation and that we keep the remaining time for uh, questions on, uh, yeah, on sure. projects. So, uh, next Chris, I'll... go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Next, I'll talk about implementing UI for Jenkins Info Statistics project. Um, it's supposed to be a medium sized. Because like uh, G uh, Google just introduced uh, three sizes this year, so used to be like this one was called the standard size last year, and the project difficulty is intermediate, but uh, it's if you're a beginner, you're welcome to try the try out too if you have a good proposal. Project nature is more in front end web development, data visualization, and presentation, and maybe a bit of data wrangling too. Uh, the goal is to build upon the current GitHub pages based UI into user friendly and full featured website for showcasing Jenkins info statistics. So, uh, this means that um, this project has some market value for Jenkins because like we can use it to uh, to um, to to get more sponsorship from um, from interested parties. And this may uh, be why it could be like a potentially a good project to uh, propose for because like um, it's kind of important to Jenkins. Skills wise, uh, we'll use mostly React, so uh, either Write or Vits or Gatsby. So it would be probably in JavaScript. We might consider TypeScript, but I don't think it, we. Um, it's worth a hassle because I, for if we do it in TypeScript, it may take longer and uh, it may take more work to get it done properly. And uh, also we'll be using plot libraries like um, Apache, eChart, or Plotly.js, depending on like um, what uh, the contributor's preference in. So, um, so is there any questions about this project? Uh, just answering a small questions from Carlos in between. So, oh no, we're we're going. I I'll answer to you, Carlos, uh, afterwards. But first, uh, I can't read. Ratul, I hope I don't butcher your name. Go ahead. Yeah, hello. I'm Ratul. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Yes. So, uh, after seeing the code base, the first thing that I noticed that. Uh, the number of JSON and CSV files are a, uh, are a lot. So I was thinking yeah. that uh, to use a database, SQLite database, maybe, you know, make an API and fetch the data from there. Because like, it's it's said uh, this way, because like, um, I think it's like for security issues as well. And on top of that, like, uh, 
info teams they that that's the way they, they've been doing things and uh it it may not be feasible to ask them to change the ways to the manage things and we probably won't have access to the post res database to fetch it um so we have to work with um data hosted via JSON files. That may be a limitation, but um that's also like um that that maybe has some advantages to it too because like um it's um in in a sense more stable. Okay, okay, and uh, one more thing. I think uh, I asked this in the chat. But uh, that uh, the part of uh, the count of plugin per Jenkins version, that's actually hard coded in the website in the GitHub pages, right? For every file there is an HTML, every plugin there is an HTML file hard coded and the data are hard coded. Yep. Okay. Hang on. Yeah. Let's, so let me try to find what we're looking, what you're talking about, because I already found it. So you mean um in the repo, right? Yeah, in the repo, yeah. Oh, hang on. Let's, um, stats. So, GitHub. So, we, do we still remember which path it is in? So, it's like, is it in test data? Yeah, let me uh, see once. Uh... Yeah, inside the plugin versions folder. Um, plugin versions. Hang on. Plugin versions. I mean, uh, plugin versions. Oh, I see it. Static. Okay. Dress. Yeah, you will see there are a lot of HTML files, and each HTML file has the data of each plugin. We are hard coded into it. Okay. Mm. Can you like do do you have the path of what you're looking at? Can you share it with the chat? Share. I don't think my network will hold if I share. Oh, okay. But uh, share yeah, a link should... via the chat. Yeah, just paste a link to the page that of concern in the chat system. No need to share your screen. Yeah. No okay. Need... Okay. Yeah. Wait a second. Okay. in the chats. Okay. Let me see. Plug conversions. Okay. I think like these um we have to what was it what was exactly your question? You mean like for which file? Yeah, uh, I'm basically asking in order to make it dynamic, right? We should make it dynamic if you're make, uh, doing it in React. Instead oh, of hard code, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have to replace all these. So we we have to replace all these in a Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, uh, we have to make it into JSON or CSV files, right? For, for each uh, plugin. I think they already have to it. make it the CSV. Uh, or JSON. They already have it. They have it, but I didn't see it in the repo. They're yeah. generated and not hard coded. Yeah. Yeah, they're generated. Yeah, and uh, one more thing, I just uh, made a demo web application to just see where it goes. Can you guys check once? Um, can you say it again? So where, where do you get the info? Yeah, sorry. Uh, what, what do you say? So, cause I didn't catch like every word. Yeah, I was saying that uh, yesterday I was like thinking how to make the website and stuff and I just oh. made a demo website. So uh, yeah. would you like to review or something? You can post it in the chat like on Gitter so we can have we can all take a look. So all of the mentors can take a look because like when we do ranking, all of us contribute, not just one, not just the not just core mentors for the project or the lead mentor. Yeah, uh, I didn't catch on. Oh, can you repeat once? So the, oh, yeah. the, the yeah. what Chris yeah. Chris is saying that these demos you can share and ask people to review it by sharing the link in the Gitter chat. But definitely okay, okay, you right. should hold on. 
but definitely you should mention them uh, in the links to that in your proposal. So you, the written document where uh, you you will describe what you're going to do and why we should pick up you as a, as a... yeah right right good right, right. yeah and on okay. top of that like every mentor within Jenkins will evaluate every one of the projects so it's like you may want to like um you may want more people to get to get a look get to take a look at what you've done okay we have a pending question from Carlos and. Chris, how much time do you need for your last project? Should be quite short. It should be okay. okay. Good. We can go with a question from Carlos. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, uh, Carlos. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, well, the, my question is, I'm seeing the code. So basically, this project is to migrate from the jQuery version that you have to React. If I'm um, mistaken, or it's to migrate from is like from the current GitHub Pages version to a React version to full version. Exactly. Like, it's not very well designed. Yeah, because I'm saying that you are using jQuery for the components. So yeah. Well, I see in the code. So. We use React. Yeah. We don't want to okay. the a of a JavaScript site. Yes. Okay. And also another question is uh, do you have environments to test this? If we do some coding just to test the, the solution or how how do you do that? Let's say in the back end or in the front end. How, how do you manage so that? Do you have hmm? yeah for backends like that. Uh, there's a way to get the data. So um, I will let um my co mentor talk about like later maybe on GitHub. Ah, so okay, got it. You can ask him. Then his name is Harvey. So if you ask a question, he 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 monitor the channel. He will know it. So okay, he will answer. Okay. So he, yes, he basically just to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's in charge. He's in charge of the info part of the project. Uh, okay. Yes, probably. So he to definitely have a place knows. To test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to he, have a he place knows to test. where where to test and to set. Okay. Up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good. Although, Other... isn't isn't it a general pattern that we like to be able to run a prototype of the site ourselves locally? Yep. And and yeah. so Carlos, the the working assumption is build locally generate a static okay. site so that nice. we can see it. It's not nice. nice. It, it's, it's much healthier for all of us if we can do a local build rather than having to rely on hosted infrastructure. No, no, but, 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 but I'm talking about the, just the front end. Yeah, the front end, we can do it locally. Yeah, we can create a Docker container for that. But uh, I'm talking about the, the backend because you need to access the, uh, the file system or the repository. So, yeah. Yeah, and so, I think even there, the the simple approach I've seen is download the data files to a local copy locally. and reference them locally. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, got it. Yeah, it's mostly because if you want to see maybe improvements, let's say in the searching part in the in the backend, yeah, you need you need some amount good amount of data to see if the the change that you did basically is performant or or not. So, yeah, basically it's that. Thank you. Okay, Chris, so next you... project. So next one is uh, improving plugin have score scoring mobilities project. So it's um same as last one of medium sized. So we, we but it may be shorter than uh one hundred seventy five hours because like, it depends on how many how many uh, how many probes you're going to add. Uh, the project typically is ranging from beginner to intermediate because it doesn't require like to um a lot of uh, like um hard knowledge. But uh, we do require you to know um, some basic OOP and some Java to, uh, to be able to complete the project. Project nature. So Plugin Health School attempts to provide an accurate assessment of how much care and help a plugin needs in its current state and can be used for every interested potential contributor to have an in-depth look at how they can fulfill those needs based on expertise. This means that like, um. Uh, it offers kind of like some metrics to a user or a contributor to decide like how much work they need to do work uh, to do on it to make it um to make the plugin a functional one or to to restore itself to make it like um have a very good health score. So it also allows users to make a conscious decision before installing and using a plugin. So that's as is like for as a reference for the users. So if if the health score is kind of low, they may consider not to install a plugin or uninstall it altogether. And the goal is to add some additional 
probe studio scorings to the parking house school project. So we do have a uh, repo for it. It's called Parking Health Scoring. It's hosted within, um, I think it's within Jenkins Info. The skills to be gained or developed through these projects are Java, OOP, data extraction from GitHub repositories, data visualization, and analysis. And we do have like um, uh, some suggested um, probe ideas and the uh, plug and have scoring uh, repo as well in the issues tracker. So we may want to take a look if you're interested. And uh, I think um, that's about it. Is there any questions about this project? We have already one from Carlos. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so the sorry so the the, the scoring part uh, is already defined in the in the code, right? Uh, how do you score or how do you define which is a health uh, score for a plugin? Um, right? For if, if if you have more probes, you have to refine the formula to. to okay, be, yeah. So, so like, actually, it's necessary to define that part like a specification or something to decide yeah. what will be the okay. Thank you. Great. So, so Carlos, what I would I would phrase what you just said slightly differently. The health score that we have today is a good health score, but we want to improve it, and some of the improvement may be changing the scoring system that's being used, adjusting weights or adjusting values that are being applied. Others might be adding new new tests new checks for mm -hmm. this or that measure of health and again and again in order to include those in the score they'll that will require that the scoring system be adjusted to include them with a, an appropriate weight okay also the idea of that uh, health score uh, component is to have an api for that uh, to be consumed or? oh oh it's much more than that so Alyssa, is it you sharing your screen I am. Do you want me to stop sharing? No, no, no. Well, you could either stop sharing or we could have you navigate to plugins.jenkins.io. This is something I think it's worth showing people how it looks. Yep. So if you if you could just open plugins.jenkins.io. Go to websites. Uh, my computer is... It's still alive because we see it flickering in your glass. Uh, is it? Can you see my screen? Oh, <laughs> no, we no, we cannot see your I'm screen. I'm joking. I'm joking. Well done. I'm getting there. Or, or Illis, if you per prefer, I can share my screen. Either is yeah. fine. There's no. This is not not something that it has to be you driving. Perfect. Yeah, okay, so here is the site. This is plugins.jenkins.io. Uh, yes, there are by now almost 2,000 plugins for Jenkins that are presented on this page. With that many plugins, Jenkins administrators confront a very real problem. How good is this plugin that I'm considering installing? Should I actually install it? So Alyssa, in the Find Plugins field, let's have you type in, um, how about the word platform? Let's see, platform, is that a good choice? Let's do, Git. let's, yeah, let's pick one. Yeah, Git. Git is, okay, Git is a very, yeah, a very is, reasonable yeah. one. It's the most popular search term. We're not adjusting the search. Okay, on the top left set of ta of cards, you'll see um, in the card section, Git, the top leftmost card, that yes. one, click it. So this is the Jenkins Git plugin page. Ah. It's got all sorts of useful information, pages and yeah. pages of documentation, etc. videos embedded, la, 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 all the way back up to the top, Alyssa, because we want to look at one of the other tabs. There are five tabs across the top. So releases tells us what are the plugin releases that are available and their nice. change logs. Issues, don't click issues because we don't want to wait. The <laughs> Git plugin has an embarrassing number of issues open on it. Uh, dependencies tells us what are the, the the things on which this plugin depends and which plugins depend on it. Okay. And the last one, the most important one for this discussion is health score. Oh. So what you see here is this plugin's health score is 99 out of 100. And the thing that lowers its score is in that nice highlighted section down below, repository configuration. 
what this project is proposing to do is further improve this. So Alyssa, for instance, you could expand any one of those down arrows on the right-hand side uh, over by the 100% right. on adoption. You click that and it says, oh, here are the details that this score was applied to. The plugin is not up for adoption and it's been released fairly recently. So it, it didn't lose any points there. This site is what you're trying to improve. Got and it. yes, we do back-end assessments to help us contribute to the site, but ultimately we're presenting to users. Carlos, did you have a question there? Oh yeah, actually it's clear. So so basically with this, uh, you can, uh, I don't know, like uh, de it, decide or define uh, which uh, plugins needs to be, uh, yeah, the people I, need to work on or something like that. Yeah. This is one of the, uh, the, the the indicator that it gives. The other one is when you're administrating a Jenkins instance and uh, somebody of of your team comes, hey, I found this nifty uh, plugin and I would like it to be installed or with the administrator can have a look and see yeah. there, is this well-maintained? Has it been uh, yeah. released recently? And so we have a couple of probes that give this picture and we're continuing to improve right. that. So the, for example, it's much better if a plugin has was released within the last year than if it was released nine years ago. And we have plugins that were released nine years ago. So okay. so it's it's good for users to know, oh, this is current. It's also good for them to see the list of maintainers on the right hand side there that, hey, there are multiple maintainers. Or if there are no maintainers, that gives them another hint. Yeah, or if he said deprecated also to take action. Right, so, deprecated yeah. is another one, or open security yeah. vulnerabilities. Those yeah, exactly. are all good contributors to health score. And it's we we like for our users to know about those kinds of things. Yeah, okay. Yeah, clear. Thank you. Chris, was there anything else you wanted to highlight in terms of the, the screenshot, the pictures? Mm, probably not, but... Um... Maybe can we go also to the repo itself, to the plugin, uh, have scoring repo on um, info, Jenkins with info, I think. Yeah, that'll be a little more complicated, Wait, Alyssa. So, oh, so under, the, the, under the under yeah. the links, under the, the links on the side. far right hand side, there's GitHub. If you click yeah. that, that gets us to the repository for this plugin. Yep. Now you have to rewrite the URL. And I think it's, well, actually, Alyssa, maybe I'll just paste it to you. Yeah. Because I think it's, isn't it called Plugin Site or Plugin Health Score? We have scoring. It's like, uh, let me type that in. Okay. Plugin Health Scoring. Here we go. Okay. So I'll paste it into the chat, Alyssa, in case okay. that helps. Yeah. Alyssa, so, whoops, where is the chat? There we go, here we go. So here is the page, and this is the contributing page for it. If you just click that link, it'll take us into the, the right page. The contributor page. Uh, we can take a look at that. So, um... This, there we are. Are you able to so see? I paste I pasted it into chat, but we're currently seeing yeah. your Git, the Git plugin page. I stop sharing so now i have way too many things hold on just a minute uh... perfect yeah there so this are. and chris was there something specific you wanted to show i just took her to the contributing doc yeah no worries so um if you can like we can go through it uh quickly so um, if you want, do want to contribute to this project, remember to go to this page first to get like to get like uh, the basic info about what to install and uh, what steps to take because it, it can get kind of complicated uh, and kind of confusing at the same time if you don't follow it hundred percent. Yeah, so actually, I think this component is quite important because it's to to keep basically a healthy uh, plugin ecosystem. So yep. yeah, right. Plugins the is the power. <laughs> plugins are uh, is the power of Jenkins. Yeah. But on the other side, uh, you need to manage or give clear indication. Well. Yeah. It's like when you go to uh, to a restaurant or or self service, you want to know if the food is good good or or 
uh, is too old. Yeah, the review is right <laughs> from the right. Yeah. Yeah. Elisa, can we go up top to the issues tracker? So we click on the issues. The issues. There. And um, and maybe click on just probe. Just the, the web. Just click mm -hmm. on the button, the chip, or whatever you call it. Click on it. This one. Yeah, just click on that one. So uh, you can see like all all of here, especially first few, uh, by Adrian. Uh, those are the probe ideas that we ha currently have for um for the GSOC twenty twenty four project. So, but you can always think of new ones, but mm -hmm. um. The issues we want to the the like the thing we the things we want to consider are like objectivity, how useful it is, and also like um how accurate the measure can be. So like um such yeah, as, no, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that maybe the rules that maybe needs to be reviewed because I don't know what are the measures that you are taking, maybe number number of commits in the last month or the number of the number of downloads or yeah, I don't know. So I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure about the number of downloads. It may be a, it may be like a good measure but not not like a very objective measure because it it, it, oh. it takes account kind of popularity too. It's like on top of that like um it can be downloaded more because like there might be some issues sometimes. So that might ah, be okay. It. So this is a good indicator. Okay. Yeah. So we need to find like good indicators, good uh, good key measures, you know, to determine like which new probes to add. And um, it. it's like we have some our suggestions previously, and they were not good, and we rejected them based on uh, based on reasons that like um they may not be like very accurate and reproducible. That's why okay. we don't. We, we we have to be very careful when can see which probe to add. Yeah, I think yeah, it's a, a matter of review the rules and maybe try to add more meaningful ones, but uh, yeah. I don't know. That's a good word, yeah, meaningful ones, yeah. So Jean Marc, do you have a question? Yes, well, I don't have a question. I have a comment because we're reaching uh, slowly the top of the hour. And I'd like to make a general comment uh, here. So uh, GSOC at this stage, uh, and we're still waiting to know uh, what are the organization that will be selected. So, but in any case, sort of to, to the the rewind, take a deep breath. <laughs> Sorry, a lot of people will compete, will work on a proposal, get interested, and will uh, try things on. Not being selected does not mean that you need to close everything, forget it, and, and so on. What I would like to advocate uh, here is saying that the work that you're going to do and the preparation, even if not selected, is worth uh, the exercise. And I encourage you also to um, continue for the fun. Uh, for two reasons. Um, one, uh, the, and the most important one, this is the best way to learn how things work, uh, how to contribute, uh, learn uh, what others did and you're building on their shoulders. And uh, this is a, a, a very important way uh, to grow. I agree. This is a competition, and there's there's nice pocket money to earn with that. It's very, um, it looks very good on uh, on a resume. But it's not the only thing. Uh, and learning how to contribute, how to participate in a big project, and being proud that your code has been merged and is being used by thousands of people, just that is worth uh, doing the effort. So don't do it only for winning and be part of the team that will attack the, the summit, the picture of the mountaineering in the beginning. You can still learn, you can still have a lot of fun and also give back to the community by participating. Uh, just wanted to share uh, uh, that uh, 
uh, insight. It's a competition agreed, but contributing, participating, and I heard with a question, a lot of people get excited, oh, this is interesting, this is interesting, and, and so don't refrain yourself. Just participate to, to it, learn. People will be around uh, maybe uh, in other forms to help you, maybe not the same pace uh, as GSOC, but the community here is welcoming. And everybody learns uh, from these experiments. So I'll stop talking as an old man with white hairs, but mm -hmm. uh, just <laughs> very so, interesting and useful things to do. Melissa, back to yeah. you. Um, so yeah, so we're out almost out of time. We got like less than a minute. But um, as I mentioned earlier, I will send out the slide and the, um, the slide deck and the recording to this meeting shortly. Um, and then we still have the remaining I don't, um, <clears throat> list of project ideas that we will cover with you at a later day and time. So I'll probably try to schedule that for next week. So keep an eye out for that. But otherwise, keep the conversations going in Gitter. And um, we'll talk soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you for Bye, all everyone. for attendance.